Hello, you are watching the Juggernauts. Today we are playing Dota 2, and I am going to show you how to play a Dragon Knight solo off lane. Not off lane, main lane. You know what I mean. Um, What's well, the safe lane? Essentially, for people that don't know what how Dota works, uh, we're going to picks here. Um, my team is the Dire, and the enemy team is the Radiant. It's a pub match, so random people don't know who they are. Here I am, second player, so it means I'm yellow or like whatever color that is <laughs> um, and we're mm, fighting some bearded. weird pony guy not gonna question it and I'm gonna pick a dragon knight up we got lifesteal, a lion and uh, shadow shaman on my team I forget who the last pick is on my team some people leave it till like the very last second to pick their hero so they don't get pack counter picked if they're picking a hero that's easy to counter but it would appear that no one is counter picking at all at all this game. I mean they've picked up a uh, pugna on a team with two carries that don't aren't spell intensive, which is ridiculous. Um like you'll you'll discover more about the characters I'm gonna be playing and the characters my team are playing and the enemy playing as we get more into the game. At the moment I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown of uh, Dragonite and my build for him should usually start off with some tangos and like maybe a healing salve pick up a uh... let's have a look here I'll get rid of this stuff I'll get rid of this stuff <laughs> uh... but you can still see the stuff through it um... I'd usually pick up something like in fact if I just go to my player's perspective I'm oh I'm on the wrong hero you can tell this is my first time doing a casting of a Dota game. Here I am, I've picked up a healing salve as you can see, tangos, a quelling blade, two iron branches and a stout shield because I've randomed this hero so I got a bit of extra starting gold. We've got an, a jungling uh, lifestealer, this guy. And he's picked up a very similar build. I'm assuming he randomed as well. See he's not got as much stuff because he's not randomed. So he's got fewer gold in his actual bank. We've got a Shadow Shaman who's going bottom with bear, with a Brewmaster even. He's not randomed as well. Although he may have actually. He's got quite a lot of that stuff. We've got a Lion who's going mid. He's definitely not randomed with only picking up a Null Talisman and a set of Tangos. Um, as you can see through this game, picking up tangos is quite important in this game. Like, you know, some early regen. So, um, we can show you more about this as we go play more. The enemy are coming up lane. They've, for some reason, not left base quickly enough. So the creeps have started. I think they're trying to... Hang on, let's give them a look. Are they trying to block? Did they fail? I think they failed a block. What you can do is stand in front of the creeps continuously, slowing their progression forwards down the lane and that can uh, help you like push the creep for way forwards but it's not really necessary in the long lanes like this like it's completely unnecessary in fact it's worked against them in this case because they put me in a really good position okay let's just I'll show you like this area here is perfect it's where exactly where I want to be the enemies are here which is the last hit and to gank me to get behind me they're gonna have to come here and go past my tower and maybe run into a creep wave so they really don't want to risk that. Here he's been stupid. He's come too far forwards and been attacked by my tower. So really soloing a uh, lane is all about survival, out regening. And see I've picked up a healing salve and a tango. I've picked up a mixed set of healing. Like like you know, I've got a one really large heal in one like the salve. It heals 400 HP in last 10 seconds. And then the tango is a heals over time that can't be knocked off. Like if you take damage while you're using a salve, then it goes off. So you use that when you're safe and you just want to heal up to full again. Whereas this guy's just picked up two salves. Which means he can't heal like... He's going to waste a lot of money by healing up when he's only on half HP. Like he won't get the full use of the salve. And he, if he just picked up a set of tangos instead of two an extra salve, he would have had that little bit of regen just for when he's on half HP and he doesn't want to risk being that like midway. So now he's going to risk like having this like 100... Oh, I'm spamming spells at the moment. Because... Um, 
I've really got like you know not very much spell reliance because in this case I'm just going to pick up some early uh, breath fires just to deal some damage to them because I've realized they haven't got very much regen like this guy especially this guy is massive fool because see look now he's sitting on half HP say someone was to come into the lane and gank him right now he'd be really easy to kill he's got no easy regen he'd have to retreat out of battle before he was able to regen See here, here he was silly. He tried to get his stun off under tower, so he ended up taking like 400 damage to deal, like what, like less than 100 damage to me. Just not a worth worth it for him to trade off with me. So what you want to do for Dragonite anyway? Uh, here is his skills: breath of fire, you breathe fire in a direction in front of you, bit like an AOE in front of you, deals a bit of damage, deals 770 damage to everyone in the fire. You stun your dragon tail, um, two sec, two point five seconds stun. Pretty good. Well, later on, I'll show you how it's really effective. Like, really effective. But you you should always be here when you're in a solo off lane. Like, try and be here. You should try and stay within the XP range. But because these guys are pushing so much, like, I can just stay here. Like, I don't really need to worry. And I just try and get a few last hits. Like, really, getting being in an off lane like this, you shouldn't even have to worry about getting lot off hits, like last hits as much, because you're going to be out leveling them. Like your level is going to be higher because you're not splitting the XP. You're getting double the XP they are, so they're level three and I'm level four, and I'm nearly level five. In fact, you know, I'm only like 40 XP off of it, and they're only halfway through level three. So it's not good for them really to be like so aggressive because it means I can just say really safe like they need to get kill on me really need to get kill on me to make this lane work for them and in not until, until that happens it's not really worth it for them they're trying to be mega aggressive because Centaur is a really aggressive hero he has, a, he has an AoE stun and he, do, he, he deals a bunch of damage to deal damage to himself like, like, that's a really massive nuke early on, 250 damage is massive. But um, I'm a really good hero to fight him, because like, one of my passives gives me health regen and, um, like, passive armor. So, uh, I end up getting more, like, more HP, so I can sit in lane longer, so I don't need to return to base. So it's really good to the character to off lane with, like, solo. A lot of people play him too aggressively and they end up dying in solo off lane so they don't think he's a good solo off lane. But as you, you will see from this video, he is really good. Like you can use if you just play him safe, then you will probably win an off lane. Here we go. I remember this. They get mega aggressive for like no apparent reason. I've taken no damage. They don't know how much mana I've got. Well they probably do actually, that's the reason they charge, but look, here we go. Here's the guy from the jungles come in. They've been too aggressive, but look, they one of them dies. Unnecessarily, they took so much damage going past this tower without a creep wave that they ended up dying. And then here's me trying to flame them because I'm a dickhead. <laughs> but it's got to be done. It's got to be done. It's Dota. You've got to do really do this. But see, now I'm just free farming. And it was two on one, and they unnecessarily were aggressive. What they should have done was not push the lane and let me push the, like, let my tower. Because all the creeps were here, my tower was attacking them. So my tower was pushing the creep waves while they were pushing it, and they were pushing it equally as my tower. If they just backed off a bit, my tower would have pushed the creep wave. I would have been here, and they could have hidden in these bushes, or this bushes, gone around behind me, and the, we wouldn't have taken any damage from the tower. It's like, it literally comes down to positioning in this game. It really does. And like, I, this guy, where I, I got lucky getting that kill, if I'm honest, like, I wouldn't have made that kill if he wasn't, like, here, getting these farm, when he when I got attacked, so. Oh, he comes up behind me. This was a bad move by me, going shopping, like, one mid-attack, but he didn't make anything of it because his teammate wasn't there to help him. I back off a little bit because I'm scared that Ninx is there in Viz. I, and then I realise that he's only level 5 and he doesn't have it as in Viz yet. See what I mean? Like level 4, level 5, and then there's me sat on like level 7. I'm out leveling them. Oh, just more flaming. You gotta love flaming. That's what everyone does in this game. I've picked up Belt of Strength here to build Power Treads. I'm going into Power Treads first because I want movement speed on my character so I can escape. But I also want that bit of like HP regen. Not HP regen, but increase my um, HP pool. I made a big mistake here, I should have come forwards, because I didn't realise that, like, I was expecting a gank from mid in this point, but um, I was a bit tired, I'm going to say, I'm going to use that excuse, 
But yeah, I like come forward eventually and just hide here. Oh, oh not. Um, but yeah, here's a good place to hide because they can't see you in lane, but you're still in XP range. I think I didn't want to hide there because some of the trees here are broken, so they might have seen me going down and then here hiding here. Middle is missing. But yeah, Ninx is like my biggest threat in this lane. Um, if Ninx can land a stun, a ranged stun, and then Centaur comes in and stuns on top of it, then I would not be doing as much damage as I am. Like here, I forced his Centaur out of lane again because he's used two of those healing cells like up during the fights unnecessarily. They they come back to lane with no ha regen. See, I've still got regen. I'm keeping myself stocked up. So it means I can trade hits. Like, I can come in, hit this guy, walk out, and just, you know, I'm not scared of losing HP. I've got HP regen. This guy does not. He's going to have to leave lane if he drops too low. Otherwise, he's going to risk just dying to me. See, he's dropping out of lane now, I think. He's got no mana. He's got no HP. Yep, yeah, there he goes. And now I'm free farming. Just all because none of them could stay in lane because they didn't bring regen back to lane. So I'm just going to sit here. I'm just going to get some nice regen while I offer my passive, you know, regen in some HP so I don't even need to use my items. And I'm just going to get some last hits. I should have been denying here, really. Wow, I'm, I suck at last hitting in this video. I'm much better than usually. Oh, come on, deny that one. It's pretty obvious. Okay, so he's come back to lane. Looks like I'm uh, getting a gank from mid. He's come back and he's bought another two healing cells. What is this guy doing? Is what I'm going to say. That is such a silly build. Look at this. He's picked up boots and quelling blade. Magic wand and healing self. Magic wand is one of the most ridiculous things you could buy against a dragon knight. Ridiculous. It's uh, It relies on people spamming. Like, Okay, I'll read its um, thing. Okay. It gives you charges for every spell an enemy casts within a range of your, like an AoE. And uh, yeah, it looks like Vine gets himself killed here, but he kills uh, Huskar, that's pretty good. I was probably shopping like an idiot, but it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> I didn't die, so it's cool. He got a kill, so it's not too bad. Oh, more flaming. Gotta love flaming in this game. That's what everyone does it, so... Okay, so he comes back in. I'm just going to get some ranged right clicks on him before it runs out. Okay, I'll back off here because Pugna is a big threat. I don't. I think Ninx is probably nearby because like, I've been thinking he'd still be in lane, but instead he's gone bottom. He's switched out lanes, so I don't know why he would do that. And here we go. He's come under tower again. Oh. Life Stealer jumps inside of me. He does the right thing here and he backs off. He's seen Life Stealer jump inside me. That mark above me means Life Stealer's inside of me, and Life Stealer has an ability. Uh, well, I'll show you when he jumps back out. I think he just sits inside me for a while, uh, having a furry ride. But he has an ability where he can jump inside friendly or enemy creeps. He can't jump inside enemy heroes, but he can jump inside friendly heroes. And when he jumps out, he does a lot of damage in an AoE. Like, I think it's something like a 500 nuke or something. Something ridiculous like that. Probably not even that much, actually. Probably says if I go over it. No, it doesn't. But if it's a, just a creep... Oh, they come back. Yep, see? He jumped out, did a bunch of damage. I back off. Centaur following me, knowing that he would come under tower. Stun him under tower. Now he's going to take all of this damage from the tower. Look at that. Look at, he's on half HP just because he came under tower. And then he dies. Using his, like, using his, that move I talked about earlier, the one that does damage to him. This one. Deals damage back to you, so it was pointless. Like, he was it's silly. He came under tower and he got stunned here. You should never, never come under tower when you know someone's got a stun. I, I literally, literally pulled him back to the tower. Here's some more flaming. He's accusing me of using the tower to kill him. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, and that's me not being a very nice person. And I'm still sitting on this health regen. Still waiting for him to do enough damage to make me warrant using it. But, once again, see how his, uh, his, he's used all of his health regen pointlessly. He's wasting money. He's not been, he's not backed off to use them. He's just healed a few HP and he's just wasted the money. Like, it's a very, inex like, it's very expensive and inefficient way of health regen. 
So that's the reason I have a combination of both healing self and tangos. So I have that little bit of both. Pugna's not got a bad build. He's he, he, like I feel that like he should have played support in this game. He's like the only hero on their team that's like support. Radiant structures are fortified. And he he probably didn't live up to that. Your like there's like one ward on happen. the enemy team. If we've got no wards though, to be fair, so that's Myth even better than us. Missing. But Centaur is back. Probably wants a bit of revenge. Yeah, he does. Oh, he's not liking me anymore. Oh, he comes in. Gets the stun off. He's under tower again, because I've pulled back to the tower. So once again, he's going to take a bunch of damage from the tower. Like an idiot. What is he doing? Look at this. Look. I turn around. Dead. Dead. And then I pop the healing salve. That's when you use it. Once the enemy's dead. Once you think that you can't, like, you're not probably going to take damage. And then I just start flaming some more. That's the reason he plays so aggressive, is to, I just flame him, enrage him. I end up making him so angry at with me that he doesn't even, like, want to uh, think about things he does before he does them. And there's, there's me being an even bigger dick. <laughs> but yeah, I have to leave. I left lane to get some mana back. Probably buy some items. There's some more flaming. Let's just ignore it. <laughs> We've got a lot of flaming in this game. All there is pretty much flaming and skill. <laughs> Let's check the scoreboard. So, because I've been smart and kept under tower, I'm now 2 for 0, and this centaur is 0 for 3. He's just been too aggressive. Literally. In a lane against Dragonite, who can just outlast almost anything if you just play him well. And now I just jump back into lane. I'm, si I'm free farming now. No one, no one's here to try and combat me. Dyer's middle tower is under because attack. I've, uh, I've just Dyer's sat in the lane safe, fortified. and Centaur's just raged to the point where he's gone another lane. I think they're trying to push mid, yeah. Everyone, trying go, to push go. mid. His life stealer. Do I TP in? Please say I've got a TP. No, I don't have a TP. TP is so important, guys. Um, in this game, I was obviously having a bad day. That's the reason I was flaming. Oh, oh no, I'm pushing I'm pushing this tower, so to be fair. Something bad is happening. In your um but, but here they pushed back the tower. So they didn't get the tower, and he's he's now just roaming, which is incredibly bad. Like he should have just sat in lane and did what I did, just sit here under his tower, getting XP. Because he's lost he lost the lane to me, so he abandoned it. That makes no sense. There's no reason to do so. Like, I suppose ganking makes sense, like if you're going to gank to try and get back your XP. Like, the you know, try and bring it, bring it back to an even pace. But in this case, look, he's just, he's just walking around, doing not very much. Just sort of like, wandering around, not gaining any XP, attack. any gold. He's going to go for a gank here, but Lion's just going to frog him. Oh, sorry. And Lifesteal is here, so they're not going to get any kills here. Oh, does he die? Yeah, he dies again to tower. Tower. Tower killed him. They get lifestealer though. But it was two on three and he still died. No, four on two, even. In fact, their entire team was mid and one of them still died because he was under tower. It's ridiculous. I mean, there's no excuse for that kind of like, skill. Lack of skill, even. Um, and here I'm just pushing the tower back off a little bit in case they TP in. Because I think they've just got thing, and then no TP mid to come help out if they're still pushing. It's important to like TP around and try and keep it from people from pushing too much. Like I saw them take the tier one, and I was like, they can take the tier one. See, they come bomb top to come gank me because they don't want me to uh, be free farming too much, which I've already done. Like at this point, I'm pretty much. I think I'm going for. I think I must be going for Black King Bar. Um, and I'm pretty much on it. I, you know, I'm over halfway through Black King Bar now, and we're sitting on a 16-minute game where I've just played safe. You know, I've not done very much in the game except you know, I've just played safe and been a hard carry. And there we go, we get another kill. And Nynx is going to use his invis just to escape. It's a waste of an ulti. This is like an absolute waste of an ulti. He should have engaged on me when there was two of them there. Like it was me, him, and. Like, you know, Slardar, two really good stunners. 
I'm just hanging back. I'm, I'm hard carry, so I really don't want to die first thing in the game. So positioning is very important. But we get another few kills here. And see, now we just team wiped them. And I'm just sitting back. And now they're just all raging. Everyone's raging. We've got, we've got a fairly good team, to be honest, but... Like, it did just come down to the fact that at the start, they were just so aggressive. Unnecessarily. But anyway, back onto Dragonite. Um, I've never, I've not explained his ultimate. It turns you into a dragon. Um, the first level you get short poison damage over time. Um, then your second level you change into a dragon that does splatter fire damage, like splash damage. And at the final level you, do, you turn into a dragon that does splash damage still. But it does ice damage, which like slows the enemy's attack speed and movement speed, I do believe. Yeah, it slows the enemy units, both attack speed and movement speed. Um, you should always like only like see how I've leveled up fire, breath, fire, like maximum, because it's the 300 ranged nuke on a hero that's melee based, and you really do need that kind of damage. Like if you're planning on making any kills in any game, and I've le I only leveled up my dragon's blood so high. See, I just used dragon breath. We can go back and just view that again. We come, I come back down, I think. Yeah, oh, here I am. Just view this. This is a good uh, representation of how to use Dragon Breath. The reason I've uh, leveled it up so high. So here he comes. I'm just trying to give that guy some advice. He's like, I'm like, dude, think through what you do before you do it. And then he completely ignores me and just does uh, like the most ridiculous thing. Here's a Nynx TPing in. Oh, see, he used it to initiate that time, but he's alone, so he's probably not going to make anything of this. Oh, yeah. He's not going to make anything of this, yeah. Unsurprisingly, he's going to die. Oh, unless... Does he die? Oh, no, he doesn't. But he doesn't make anything of it, and I just stun Centaur, and then he's dead, see? He stunned us. He's out of range. I wouldn't kill him, but I use Breath of Fire Breath. And I get the kill. That's the reason you should level up your fire breath. Because it's a 300 nuke. It just, it's just a kill secure for your hero. And now I'm almost done on uh, BKB. At which point I'll be nigh on unkillable. Here I come into... See? My stun again. The stun is important, but two levels of it is enough, I feel. I always felt that two levels of it was enough. Like, until you hit like level 12, when you've bought, bought your ulti. Like, I'd usually have picked up my ulti a lot later, because the first level of the ulti is a bit... Nah. I, I only bought it because of the increased movement speed it gives you. Like, um, in the dragon form, you have an increased movement Green speed. Dude's top thing is about to get knocked and... Uh, yeah, where am I? Here I am. <laughs> you get an increased movement speed, and that's the reason I also leveled up Dragon's Blood, because it gives me the survivability of the solo laning. So, um... Like, so that's the reason I leveled up these last. Like, especially my stun. I didn't feel I needed it so much, because, like, I wasn't really going to be making any kills. Or well, I didn't expect to be making any kills. At this point, I'm sat on five. Um, but that's only because of how aggressive the enemy team was at the start. And I just got so much early farm in a solo lane for no reason. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Um, what you should try, if, if you're, especially if you're in a solo lane, is using, like, Dragon's Breath at the start. Like, I'd be spamming it at them just to lower their HP because they didn't have very much health regen. Ooh, what's going on mid? I'm not in this fight, of course, because I've not bought a TP scroll. Because I'm a genius. But we lose this team fight anyway. We probably weren't going to make much of it. There was five of them against three, if I'd come in still. Do I seriously go in? No, I don't, thank god, I was going to say. What was I doing? I'm not sitting on many items currently, if I'm honest. That's not a lot. Not for... well, actually 20 minutes BKB isn't too bad. It could be worse, especially seeing as I was a solo offlane. But, um... We've got a, a jungling lifestealer who's 20 minutes into the game and just still doesn't really have very much. He has armlet, to be honest. That's alright, it's enough for this kind of game. But usually I'd say like a, a jungling lifestealer, 20 minute mark, should be on a lot more than just armlet. Especially if he's got like uh, Hand of Midas. 
which allows him to just like essentially turn any creep into 200 gold and like double the XP. I think it's double the XP, or is it 1.5? I know it's 2.5 for the experience. So yeah, it's it's really good item to pick up, but I feel that he's slowed his farm down. Like he's not good enough for it. Yeah, life steal has jumped inside me again. Before, well, the enemy can't see us, so I try and go make something of this, thinking they might be inside Roshan. I think I think I'm there. In oh no, I was doing it for the haste room. Now I'm going bottom. And am I gonna? Are we gonna make anything of this? Yes. Yeah, we are. He's gonna turn invis. Yeah. We didn't have any detection. This is the common thing that happens in pub games. If we're fighting someone like a Ninx and we're going to gank him, we should have dust. Really should have dust. But it's a common thing. Oh, wait, talking of dust, um, Shadow Shaman's got some. What am I doing? I'm not here. For some reason I've backed off. Oh no, I was cutting off the Ninx. Oh, there we go. I actually want to rewind that and see what I did. What did I do? Oh, hang on. I've uh, gone back a bit too far. Let's just double speed this. Okay, he turns in biz, runs off. Let's just watch me. I've still got this haste rune on, so I know I can f track down anyone, and I'm just like, oh, I see. I must be looking here, see that he's attacked Lion, and in anticipation of him running, I just turn around and try and cut him off, and it works. Like, I know that he'll come this way. So there we go. And he doesn't have his ulti. It's on cooldown. So, there we go, I killed the, uh, he shouldn't have gone back in really, really shouldn't have gone back in, he had no chance of escaping, he didn't even make a kill off of it. And all he's done is now it's two people died for no kills. Like I come back down bottom, we try and push bottom. Oh, hello, hello centaur, my old friend. Oh, there you go, active popped BKB. What BKB does is gives you magic immunity. And just in that second, just then, I saw him go to use his ulti, I mean not his ulti, his uh, stun, which is what he does when he runs up to people. You know, it's his normal reaction, it's just a stun. So I popped BKB so he couldn't stun me, and at that point he just used the remainder of his uh, ulti to run. Regeneration. I picked up the regen rune just to give me some mana pullback. Some more flaming. Not from me for once. Not at me either, that's pretty nice. It's a nice difference. I'm just gonna tank Roshan for my team. Probably not very interesting, so let's just speed this up. Oh, the enemy's seen us. This might get interesting. Yep, yeah, here comes a Ninx. Ninx should have used that invis to come in here and like see if he could steal it. Instead he's wasted his invis. He's probably gonna die. Oh no, no, they got a life stealer. We might back off. Yeah, I think we back off here. That's really important to get rid of Pugna's ward. Because for every mana point you spend, it does damage. Um, and mana saps your regen as well. So it's really not worth having. See, at the moment, everyone else on my team is taking damage from magic, like, st like you know, because the enemy team is magic intensive. Hugely magic intensive. A lot of stuns, a lot of magic, you know, with Pugna, a scars damage, you know, everything pretty much on the enemy team is to do with magic. None of it's really physical, like, they've got no right click heroes except for Huskar. And that's the reason I picked up a BKB, because it stops everything pretty much on the enemy team that they have to throw at me. See, now would have been a good idea to use his Vendetta if he just stayed back a bit. He could have used Vendetta, come in, and killed one of these guys in one hit. I don't understand why people use a Ninx as an in initiator. He, he can initiate, but then once he's initiated, he can no longer turn invis. Unless you're buying something like a Shadow Blade, maybe? Beforehand? So maybe you can, like, creep out after you've creeped in? I, I just don't, I don't understand why people use him as an initiator. He, he's a good one soloer, like if you're a ganking one person in a lane alone, like that guy was earlier. Um, I think it's just a testament to his player skill, if I'm honest. Like, he lost la the lane hard. Like, at this point, he doesn't even have Dagon. And we're nearly at the 30 minute mark. And it's what he relies on to kill people at this late stage. Now, I've just picked up a Helm of the Dominator. Which is active. When it's activated, you, st you take uh, control of an enemy creep. Or, well, an, a neutral creep and your own creep. Illusion. What am I about? My own creep. It's already my own creep. Um. <laughs> 
But yeah, you take control of a creep, and you can make it do whatever you want because it's like it becomes a unit essentially that you can control. And it also gives you life steal, damage, and some armor. So it's a pretty good item to pick up on Dragonite. Just for the life steal, you can also turn it into a. Um, I'm trying to remember what it's called now. Sorry, I'm having a moment. Satanic. You can turn it into a satanic, and when you pop it on someone, it increases the life steal by 175 percent. So you essentially are do, do for every bit of damage you do, you're taking more HP than you're doing damage back. So it means they'd have to be doing more damage than you are doing to actually kill you. So yeah, it's a ridiculously good item, and that's the reason you pick up the Helm of the Dominator quite early on, just to give you that bit of uh, extra, like, later on. Like, it's good for the lifesteal, but it's a cheap item that you can just pick up and then build into an immense item later on. Here we're going on for, uh, I think we're going to try and push top, because they're all here. The Shadow Shaman's being a bit brave. Yeah, he's going to die. That was silly of him. I've... I've backed up and gone back up through the top. At this point, our three, like, hot, like most farmed heroes are here, so they're probably not, even with all of them, probably not going to be able to make very much of it. Yet. Yeah. He's probably going to die now. He shouldn't have come back in to use his ulti. Ooh, he escaped. Nice. Ooh, I stunned him. Oh, I was silly then. Tried to get a right click on on him when he used spiked carapace. Yeah, this is one dead Huskar. Oh god, don't come in on me. Like, the 9 second cooldown on my stun is ridiculous. It's such a heavy, like, stun. Like, at the max level, it stuns for 3.25 seconds, which is a crazy stun. Like, in 3 seconds, you can get off all your spells. All your team can get off all their spells on the one hero. You know, that's more than enough to kill anyone. Finally, the Ninx picks up the uh, Dagon before the 30 minute mark. At this point, I hope Brew's not got Blink, which I think he's lost out on. Which I think it's not a word. Uh, I wonder what I buy. Why am I buying Broadsword? Oh, I must be building a Chrysalis uh, to give me some crits. So that's at least something that I'm doing now for damage. I haven't really built a many damage items so far. I've been relying more on my team and just been a disabler so far. Like that's the reason I used the tower early on, just to deal some damage, because I knew I wouldn't be able to kill Centaur without the tower damage. No idea what I'm currently doing, I think I'm just going for a bit of farm. And let's have a look at what's going on in the fights. Let's have a look at the enemy's builds. Uh, that's a definite brave build, armlet. It's a desperate build, I'd say. It's definitely a desperate build. This guy has been destroyed. He has been like his items, bare bones, completely bare bones. Like he is, he is running a skeleton crew. That is ridiculous. That's a horrible build. I had no idea what he was doing. Pugna's not really advanced very much on what he already had. He's picked up a Helm of the Iron Will just to give him some survivability, I suppose. Because I doubt very much he's building, like, a Helm of the Dominator, which is, like, the only item this build goes into, I think. I think this is the only item. Oh, no, he must be building Veil of Discord. He's building a Veil of Discord. That's a fairly good item, actually, for his... Increases magic damage. Well, weakens the magic immunity of the enemy. But I don't think he's going to finish it before the end of the game. This game is going horribly wrong, like, just watching here. He just got ganked and died. Uh, where am I currently? Oh, I'm coming down lane. Here I am. And I'm, I'm just about to be finished on the, uh, another five, well, another five, 200 gold, and I've got, um, Chrysalis. Uh, let's have a look at Brewmaster's build. He's built a Battle Fury. I feel that's a bit wasted. It's taking him 30 minutes to build it. It's not really worth it. Like, if he just picked up a blink at this point, he would have been much more useful to the team. Um, this guy's building Aghanims, which I don't feel he really needs, but, you know, a few wards would be nice. He being the only support on the team, except for Lion, who is also building Aghanims, instead of buying wards. It's really important that you buy wards as a support player. Like, really important. Like, I understand that we've had a good game so far, so you could argue that it wasn't necessary, but, like, there's never an excuse for it. We could have double the kills we have currently if he just had wards. You know, we'd have half the deaths we have. If we had a ward here, I would have seen that guy coming a lot sooner. Instead, we got lucky and I met him first. 
ability. Look at uh, max level. I've got a slow on my on my uh, attacks. At this point, we're just all targeting down the one hero, and then we're moving on to the next one. Oh, he's he's taken. See, decrepifying me is incredible. Like, it's such a good idea. Decrepify me puts me in like another realm of existence where I can't physically attack another person in another realm. So, um, but I take bonus magic damage, and as a right click, like you know, intensive right click hero. I can't really do very much to physically attack someone. Like if I can't like attack them with my normal auto attacks. So he was clever because I only have one or two moves that I can actually use when I'm decrepified and neither of them are enough to kill anyone. I'm just doing some right click damage. I've picked up a wolf here with my Helm of the Dominator. Actually making good use of it because it gives a bonus 30% damage to everyone within his AoE. So let's just look, see here, pack leader's aura, pack leader's aura, Good dude you know, and it's important down. for, especially for me and Brew, me and Brew get a lot from this, lifestealer would be, but he's like pushing a lane, split pushing for some reason, I don't really see the point in split pushing when we could just push this one tower, they're not, they're not really that much of a threat that we need to split push really. Pugna's ward here, his ward placement's incredible, he's done so much damage to these two. They, like even Bruce taking damage here. I'm still going. I'm still alive. You know, popped BKB because I was scared of uh, Huskar. And now I just go back to hitting the tower, right-clicking the tower to death. And there we go. I'm about to take the first barracks, and then Life Stealer split push top. Like I feel that if he was in that fight, we would have probably won it a lot easier. Slada. Ooh, Slada just died to a lion. Be interested to see how that happened. Gonna rewind? No, you can't rewind. Oh, here, here's there still alive here. Let's just fast forward this. Oh, here's the Slada. Okay, Lion's on less HP, but he's healing. Oh, what were you doing, Slada? Oh, he went too far forwards. Like he went too, he went behind the creeps and just took too many hits from the creeps. That's probably counts more as a creep kill, if I'm honest, than Lions. Radiance bottom barracks has fallen. But at this point, they've not killed me at all, and it simply came down to the fact I just played safely in lane, and I'm sitting on a nice eight for uh, non. Oh, I'm chasing down the uh, wind uh, centaur war runner. Why is he chasing Brew? Look at this build. What could he do if he got Brew? Brew, he has no attack items. Just turn around, kill this fool. You're sitting on your... you've got Thunderclap that does 300 damage. Oh, you're bringing him back to the tower. <laughs> oh, this poor sucker. Oh my god. What a poor bastard. He's died to towers so many times. What a poor... what a poor man. That is poor play. Like, through and through poor play. Yeah, look, he doesn't even want to try it. He's like, I could have jumped on him. He would, I would have lost half my HP, but he knows that, like, Blythestealer's probably here. He's just, he's flaming everyone else now. I've stopped caring. Oh, there we go. They're going to try now. They're going to try and jump on me. Pop BKB, and I walk out of there. Because they've just, they've just got nothing to kill me. Once, once I've got BKB on. Oh, I even came back in and got a kill. See, BKB is so worth it for Dragonite. You just pop it, and they can barely kill you. You have such like high physical defense that if they can't do magic damage to you, they're not going to kill you. The Centaur just died again. His item build is poor. He should have farmed. Like This Hood of Defiance pickup probably is good in a normal build when you have an attack item, but without an attack item, it's like no good at all. There's me calling the GG, being in our bed. You shouldn't really call GG, but we have done. It's common occurrence in games. We were to pushing their final towers. They are all dead in one DC. Um, and at this point, there's pretty much not much else I can talk about, really, except maybe uh, Dragonite. Um, like you can build Agonims on him, I think. I do believe. Or am I making this up? I might be making this up. I do believe I'm making this up. I don't feel Radiance that Aghanims does anything to his ulti. No, it doesn't. Radiance doesn't do a thing. Barracks I've just made that up. I bought Chrysalis. 
Oh, we, man, now we're just flaming. Now I'm just flaming. So I've picked up the Daedalus, and that just gives me that extra crit damage. I should have picked up an attack speed item and maybe a bash. That's another thing I could have done, like, similar to um, Bear's build. Uh, Brewmaster, even. Because he's picked up Skull Basher, and it gives him a chance to stun on hit. Uh, but I felt that my stun, my W, is enough to, like, pretty much just outdo any sort of mini bash that I'd need. But it is a good item if you pick up something like, you know, like a, like a Maelstrom, which increases attack speed and gives you a chance to like do a special like lightning attack on uh, every few attacks. It's like a similar to a bash, but not a bash, because it, it doesn't count as a unique attack modifier. It stacks with other unique attack modifiers because it only hits one in every few attacks. Like it's not a, it's a weird sort of unique attack modifier. You could, you'd be better off reading into it and Leaning more off of uh, like another sort of we off the website even just reading the items when you're playing the game, it does describe why it doesn't like why it counts as an attack modifier, but doesn't like doesn't not stack. Anyway, we've won this game. Bears in his bear form, in his ulti, and everyone's r still still flaring. Oh my god, flaming is like the only thing anyone does in this game ever. And it's probably better that you get used to it if you're coming into a game. Finish the game, 9 for her, uh, none, and 12 assists. Centaur, no idea what he was doing at the start. He came into lane with like no regen, like no small regen. He just came in with two salves and that's so bad. And then he came, returned after dying twice with another two salves he learnt nothing from the first time he fought and if anything he should have just returned with like un like even just one set of tangos was better than him returning with like the two salves because the, the like it regens through attacks and that is just so much infinitely better than it needs to be like for him to survive in lane because Dragonite doesn't do enough damage to really kill him. If he just stayed away from my tower, let the lanes push so it was equal, so he wasn't knighted by the tower, he probably could have got some kills on me. He probably wouldn't have died as much, and he certainly wouldn't have had like need for those many, that many salves, because he wouldn't have taken that much damage from the towers. He just got crazy, tower dived too much. He tower dived when he couldn't. Like he he just thought that his character was much better than he was. Like, even his teammates backed off before he did. He was, like, unnecessarily aggressive. And, uh, I think you should learn a lot. Like, if you do anything from this, uh, playthrough, you should definitely take into account that being aggressive against a Dragonite is never a good idea if he's smart and knows how to play the hero. So that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, thank you for watching the Geminauts.